Hey viewers, Nishi from MST TV here. I'm here with a couple of guests, Mr. Brad Brownie. Hello. And this is a uh, featured Reddit user, Chris. Hi. In this video, we're going to be talking about the ban list and how it's going to impact the metagame for the upcoming format. So first of all, Clipports took a really, really big hit on this list with Sacrifice going to one and Clipports Scout going to two. Um, they also took an indirect hit with their two of their main floodgates, Vanity's Emptiness and Skill Drain, each going to one. So Brad, you played this deck at YCS Tacoma and made top eight. Uh, what do you think of the deck now and how do you think it's even going to be relevant in this format? I think the deck, uh, if it was changed to more of an OTK kind of variant, it might be better maybe with more cats in it. But honestly, uh, the deck was pretty good because it had a lot of floodgates and Skill Drain especially making their monsters really large. So definitely will be one of the weaker top three decks. Just, just out of the fact that they lost one tool, one sacrifice, stuff like that that they need in their deck mainly. Now, what many people regarded as the best deck of the format, Necroz. Uh, Necroz lost one Necroz of Brianak and two Preparation of Rites. How do you guys think that this is going to impact Necroz going forward? Well, I never played the deck, but I played against it, and honestly, the deck seems pretty consistent regardless even if it lost those cards, because it was only scared of floodgates before, and having one skill drain and one vanities is pretty good for the deck. It doesn't have to play all these other cards like MSTs and whatnot. And honestly, it was it was it's okay against going against like a lot of back row because it can just keep regurgitating monsters, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I I think that with uh, I mean the loss of one Brianak uh, might hurt the consistency a bit, and preparation of rights obviously. It, it bogs it down a bit, uh, so they can't do their crazy pluses anymore. I think the deck's still going to be on top uh, uh, for the next month or two. I think it'll still be a contender as long as it's alive, like they did in the OCG, and put everything to one. Uh, until that happens, I think Necros will still be like a serious contender. Yeah, me having played the deck, I'm really glad that they didn't hit it any more hard than they re already did but I still definitely think that Necroz is going to be a really strong deck in the next format. So now the deck that's only a TCG exclusive, uh, Burning Abyss, they did lose Tour Guide with Tour Guide going down to one, but on the other hand, they gained Crush Card Virus with its new errata. At the same time, uh, Vanity's Emptiness going to one is kind of a double-edged sword because although they did play it at three, uh, many people also sided it in against them. Uh, what do you guys think about Burning Abyss coming up? I think it's always been pretty rough for them. I mean, it's scary getting sh uh, like one shot by Cliff Forts and Necros already have a pretty good matchup because of Trishula. And now that they're more consistent, turn one plays with Tour Guide into like Double Dante is a lot harder. You have to use more Burning Abyss cards. I don't think the Crush card can really make up for it. I think it's gonna be on one of the lower top tier decks. I, uh, I, I agree with Brad. Uh, I think that the deck isn't going to be anywhere near as dominant as, uh, dominant as it was before because um, Really, with Torgat at 1, the, the deck has not a lot of turn 1 plays uh, against Necroz. They almost have an auto-lose matchup unless they draw basically every out that they have to, like the Dejin lock and just getting out advantaged by Trishula and Brio even spinning back Dante's is just, it hurts way too much Then the deck really won't be that relevant. Now that we've talked about the big three decks of the format, um, are there any other decks that were affected by the ban list, um, either for better or for worse, that you guys think will make an impact this format? Yeah, I think uh, Satellers will be pretty strong. Uh, they're about the same as they were before. Uh, Ritual Beasts are going to be pretty strong. They can chain all their effects. Uh, there's nothing to hold them back with the Floodgates now that Vanity's gone, Skill Drain's down. Uh, should always be really, really, really good in my opinion. Maybe second or third best. Uh, Infernoids, uh, GBs are kind of iffy. I mean, they can play a lot of the anti-meta stuff, like uh, Mistake, and they have Chariots, and they have three best in now. And anything that mixes maybe Life Swarm with, because uh, now that they have two charge, you can run mini engines in a lot of the main tier one decks. Um, yeah, I think uh, Infernoids are going to be uh, pretty strong um, in the next little while. Uh, with Vanity's gone, which was really the only card that could stop the deck from uh, doing much, and now that they have charge and even three gores uh, to stop if decks like Cliffoth and uh, Necroz from OTKing them, uh, I think they'll be pretty good, especially with some of the new cards that they are getting. Um, and I think uh, Yosenju with the loss of Vanities is gonna see a decline in play because 
that was really the defining thing about the deck that they could play Thunder King, Vanities, and a whole bunch of back row, but now Vanity's at one. There's not a, a whole lot the deck can do to keep itself relevant. Uh, the other deck that I want to really pay attention to is 3.5 Axis Fire Fist, because now we finally have Tanky, uh, Spirit, and Wolf Bark are all at three together. The only thing that I'm kind of afraid of um, holding the deck back is Rekindling being at one, but with Soul Charge also at one, it's almost like they have two copies of Rekindling. Uh, so I'm still really interested in seeing what the deck can pull off this format. So that's it for stuff that's already come out. Now on April 16th, we have World Superstars coming out, which is a set that's going to feature a lot of different uh, OCG imports. Uh, Chris, what do you think of the cards that are expected to come out in that set, and how do you think that they're going to impact the meta? Uh, definitely, first and foremost, I think the Star Seraphs are going to shape the meta like they did in the OCG. The only difference is, we don't have Shockmaster like they did. Uh, one of the biggest uh, boons that the Star Seraphs could do was being able to pump out three material rank fours, and with uh, when that when they came out, the two relevant decks were Shadals and I believe Satellar Knights. And so with that, they could make a uh, Shockmaster that would let them just like plus a whole bunch and then lock out the opponent from basically being able to do anything and then just outright OTK them next turn or continue grinding through advantage. Uh, so I think Satellar Knights with the Star Seraphs are going to be they're going to be up there. I know that Necroz can do stuff about it uh, and they can try and out advantage them, but I think being able to uh, add on summon Scepter and then search and get your Sovereign summons and Deltaros popping cards, really the only thing that uh, a Necroz player can do against that is a turn one to Jin Lock. And uh, with Brio going down to two, it, it hurts the consistency a tiny bit, but. Um, I think if Necroz continues going for that play, they'll do fine. And the one other card I want to bring up would be uh, Elemental Hero Blazeman, because that gives heroes and any deck that runs a hero engine uh, in Rota, it gives them a pretty big boost in being able to just instantly dump uh, Shadow Mist and search the Polymerization if the deck plays. Um, I think it'll be a pretty good card. Brad, how about you? What do you think? Uh, I literally have no knowledge of the future stuff. I go to the tournament and I look at what's good and I usually play that. I have no idea what's new. Sounds about right. I'll be back when I'm needed. So another set that's coming up within the next couple of months is Crossed Souls. This is coming out on May 14th and a lot of players are hyping up some of the cards from there because uh, there's a lot of really good stuff. Um, one of the cards I want to talk about first is Galaxy Cyclone. This is a normal spell card. Uh, when you activate it, you can target one set spell or trap card your opponent controls and destroy it. And it has kind of like a breakthrough skill effect where you can banish it from your graveyard except during the turn that it was sent and, ban it and destroy a face up spell or trap card on the field. Uh, Chris, what do you think of this card? I think this card is really going to be um... I want to say it could possibly be a new staple, but that would be maybe a bit too uh, uh, presumptuous of it. It is certainly good. Um, it is the card that uh, basically every mill deck ever, like Infernoids, any Lightsworn variant ever wanted to, uh, you know, get rid of Floodgates like uh, Skill Drain, Vanities, but since those are less relevant due to getting hit on the ban list, I think. Um, it'll see play, certainly, but it'll see less play than it would have if uh, the two really big floodgates didn't get put to one. Okay, so another card that I want to talk about is El Shadal Anomalilith. And this is the Water Shadal fusion um, that a lot of Shadal players have been uh, looking forward to, me especially. And this card, um, you can discard a Shadal card from your hand to negate the activation of a spell or trap that special summons a monster from the hand or graveyard and destroy it. Um, it also has the effect where when it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add a Shadal spell or trap card from your graveyard to your hand. Um, personally, I'm really excited about this card. I think that it makes the Necroz matchup, which Shadal's really had a tough time with, um, a lot easier. Chris, what do you think? Um... 
I'm with uh, Anomalilith on the horizon. I'm really sad to see uh, Super Poly still being banned. I would have liked for it to come back to one because it would have been basically a blowout card in the Necroz matchup. You know, your opponent uh, is going for like a Dijin Lock uh, game two because they know you're playing uh, Shadals and you, you know, you drop the Super Poly on them, make Anomalilith to just uh, stop them from getting a lot of their uh, ritual summons off. Um, It'll also be, I think it'll be okay against um, any deck that runs like Call of the Haunted or things that rely on Soul Charge or just cards that, you know, summon from the hand or uh, graveyard with Spell Trap effects. But the one problem that I see with it is it's going to be really, really difficult to summon because the only reliable uh, water monsters that I can see being played in that deck are either Treeborn Frog or uh, Ice Hand and Fire Hand, which makes... Uh, Egrista easier to make, or uh, people running multiple Shadal cores because of the um, effect to uh, be any attribute. So another card that's been hyped up quite a bit is Jar of Avarice, and as the name suggests, this is really similar to Pot of Avarice, but it's a trap card, and it lets you, when you activate it, you can shuffle back five cards, not just monsters, from your graveyard back into your deck, and then draw one card. Um, of course, you can only activate one Jar of Avarice per turn. Uh, what do you think of Jar of Avarice? I think it's... it. Uh, I want to say it's a good replacement for uh, Pot of Avarice, or yeah, Pot of Avarice. But uh, Pot of Dichotomy does the same job, and I feel a bit better, because the whole point of Avarice was that you wanted to be able to go plus off of it while still being able to recycle your uh, key combo cards. So... Um, while Jar of Avarice being able to recycle spell and traps as well, but only drawing one, um, it's an uh, incredibly dead uh, early game. It can't recycle itself, so you can't pull a Transmigration Prophecy shenanigans by being able to never deck out with it. And um, I, I can see maybe some decks like Burning Abyss running it now that they only have one tour guide. Uh, putting that back and the some decks like the one vanities the one skill drain I think decks will be able to make it see play, but it won't see too much Yeah, I was really excited about this card at first Maybe hoping that I could shuffle back uh, Shadal monsters so that I could reuse Shadal fusion But I think that the big thing that's stopping this card is the fact that it's a trap card So unlike Avarice or Pot of Avarice, you couldn't just activate it during your turn and instantly draw two cards you have to wait a turn where it can be MST'd or your opponent can respond to it. And it's just not as good as Pot of Avarice, I feel. So Chris, I know that you as a Medolce player are definitely excited about this card. Uh, Medolce Choco a la mode. What do you think of it? I think this card is like actually the best card that the deck has gotten since like Tiaramisu. I mean, Angeli was, Angeli was good because it gives you, you know, one card plus two with the whole hoot cake mess and gelato thing. But uh, I honestly feel that she brings a lot to the table that people are just, they see that it requires two level fives or you can uh, CXCs over uh, Tiaramisu with it. People think that because it requires Pudding Sis for the special summon effect, that it's just instantly a card that you need to disregard because Pudding Sis is bad. But while Pudding Sis isn't bad because an 1800 beater that pops monster pops, pops cards when you battle, uh, even if she gets uh, like disrupted mid battle, her effect still goes off. Um, I, she's not obviously the most optimal card, but I, with uh, Choco on mode being in the deck, I do feel that her and that gives a lot of combo ability. Um, just because, you know, Instant Fusion is a card, um, people play uh, TG Strikers to make Naturia Beast if that's something you wanted to go for, because I mean, uh, going for an OTK with her is really, really strong, and she is like a 3000 beater under the field spell, uh, activates uh, Ticket and uh, returns monsters from the graveyard, so I think it's a really good card, but maybe I'm just biased because I play the deck. Fair enough. Alright, uh, so another card that's been hyped is lose a turn, and this is a kind of a new potential floodgate here. Um, this card's effect is you can activate it only if you control no special summon monsters, but while it's face up on the field, uh, negate the effects of all special summon monsters during the turn in which they are special summoned. And if an effect monster is special summoned in attack mode, it's automatically changed to defense mode. So I think that this card has a lot of potential, uh, especially in an anti-meta decks, kind of like Yosenju, or I don't really think they're going to see play, but 
possibly clipboards if someone can find a way to make them work. What do you think? I think this card uh, is a really good replacement for vanities because it's a lot more. It's it's honestly a replacement for both vanities and skill drain in one card. It's uh, it's a quite I guess a balanced floodgate in that it stops the effects of uh, special summon monsters, but it doesn't stop you from special summoning. But it stops you from you know uh, like OTKing while special summoning because if a a cliff ward player goes and you know they pendulum for five monsters, you negate their effects. So yeah, they become big but they all get switched to defense you can't really do anything with that and um, it gives you it it's a really good card in your send you considering that they never special summon and uh, normal summon normal summon normal summon not even affected that's why they could run vanities at three and uh, with no fear so I think the card is gonna also be one of the probably more expensive cards if it gets rarity bumped okay so one of the last cards that we're gonna talk about here is grieving fiend and this card's a normal trap card. Uh, when it's activated, you can target one card in your opponent's graveyard and shuffle it back into the deck. And afterwards, you can send one level three or lower fiend type monster from your deck to the graveyard. Um, obviously, this, like the really obvious connection here, is with Burning Abyss, as all of their main deck monsters mostly are level three fiends. Um, so it's definitely a card that could see side deck play, I think at the very least, um, because it disrupts your opponent's graveyard. Uh, Chris? Um, I think if uh, Burning Abyss ever needed to run a graveyard disruption card, they most certainly can't play Macro or D-Fisher. Obviously. For obvious, for obvious reasons. Uh, DD Crow wouldn't seem like a very good card in the deck because it doesn't, it's, you know, it's a minus one. While yes, you get to stop your opponent's play, it's... Uh, advantage that you won't get to keep and burning abyss has always been a deck about uh having five cards and being able to turn it to six seven or even eight with uh fire lake so i think this card is uh it's going to be pretty good because it it even helps their uh their necroz matchup because you can use it to uh return is it return to the deck or shuffle you, back you can uh shuffle back their um their ritual spells so that they can't use the effect in the graveyard to search them mm -hmm. it can dump farfa straight out of the deck to break a Dijin lock during the end phase so you can go uh you know do your burning abyss shenanigans on your turn mm -hmm. uh it can get you your tour guide search on your opponent's turn it can it can even potentially save you from dying by summoning a a sir or a graph to loop through uh your monsters so i think this card uh, has potential to see play in uh, burning abyss definitely i don't know if it'll make them super relevant but i know that it'll it'll be a good card yeah so before we sign off I think it's time we got Brad back in here. So, Brad, I summon you back to the field. So that's it for a uh, new product that's coming up. Uh, Brad, did you have any closing remarks that you want to make? Um, anything that you think about the upcoming format? Uh, I think Maxi and Baylor will see a lot more play, uh, as well as main deck shared rides. Um, pretty much rest and piss any any like control decks. Uh, Definitely see probably a higher higher play of maybe some charge variants of different decks with the new charge at two um, Yeah Chris, how about you? Um, I think this is gonna be one of the most exciting formats in uh, a long time with uh, Not a lot of floodgates to hold decks back uh, expect to see a lot more like uh, spam combo decks or just general OTK or even you know like more like less serious meta decks being able to take top spots assuming that people aren't like only playing necros but let's face it if you want to win you'll play the best deck so once again a big thanks to chris and mr brad brownie for uh being featured in this video uh do you guys have any shout outs you want to make uh, just shout out to all my friends that lend me cards all the time because i don't have any uh, and to mst tv for having me here uh, big shout out to the Yu-Gi-Oh! subreddit, which is where I got introduced to MSC.TV. Um, I think they're really cool guys, and uh, also thank you for having me on the show today. Alright, uh, so a link to Mr. Brad Brownie's channel can be found down in the description below. Um, until then, if you guys liked this video, make sure you guys give us a thumbs up. And if you guys want to see more, make sure that you guys subscribe. And if you guys want to post what you guys think about the upcoming format, make sure that you guys leave a comment down below. Um, that's it. Until next time, make sure that you guys hold on to your MST. TV. Yu Gi Oh! Did I show up? <laughs>
Ik heb de goenie. Hey everyone, Nishi from NST TV here. Uh, I'm here with a couple of guests. <laughs> <laughs> cut, cut. <laughs> so in this video, uh, we're gonna be. Hold on, actually, cut. Wow, dick. Wow. <laughs> Kenny, 